This episode of Punk Rock Horror Podcast is brought to you by the Slash and Cast Network. Tonight, on a special episode of the Punk Rock Horror Podcast, we will be discussing the evolution of Satan himself. We're discussing how he got his Christian start as a blue angel of darkness, to the red pitchfork carrying Satan, and how the Christian faith plucked Satan himself away from his home. To help discuss the topic, we are joined by a very special guest in the legendary Frank Meyer. Stay tuned after the episode very for a very special song by Frank Meyer himself. Before we jump into today's episode, I gotta do a quick, 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 quick housework. Yeah, yeah, we do. Recently on episode 128, uh, where we reviewed Deathgasm on our segment of Something We Love and Hey, I talked about a moment I had with an individual where it did not go well, and I vented about that here. Uh, you know, we're talking about popularity of the show and that type of stuff and i mean if you want if you want to know what it was all about just go back to uh, episode 128 and uh, go ahead and listen to it and so that way you can be caught up Mm -hmm. but uh we got to do our due diligence because we promote it every time you know if we're called out we got to make an apology then we will but so to jump into it i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to keep the person's name omitted just to protect their privacy but this individual who i was originally venting about on that episode Mm -hmm. actually did email the show and uh you know kind of called us out for a moment and was like you know i I was originally gonna apologize to you but after hearing how you called me names we went off topic a little bit about like a little far we went a little far yeah and and he and he made it known he's he's like you know i i don't feel bad now and i'm not gonna apologize and so us as as hosts of the show that's a moment where we really have to be responsible because honestly we just went on a little too long about it and that's what we really need to apologize about is like when We get approached by a fan or someone we're talking to and they say something that doesn't, you know, that irks us, you know, or like, you know, maybe it hurts our feelings or offends us a little bit. You know, when it comes to the love and hate segment, if that's going to be something we talk about, we should just brush on it. And our main thing is that we went we went too long on it. Well, and also the thing is, man, like pure and simple is that I do stand by what I said during that vent because i do think that it's very rude to tell you know any artist or any content creator you know um i'll support you depending on how big you are or any comments like that yeah you know that shouldn't be said but i didn't have to go to the route of name calling and saying that they were a shitty person and that they were an asshole i didn't have to do that i could have articulated what i wanted to say about it a lot better and i gave in way too much into the moment of of just reeling in on it and that's my bad i should have done a better job with that and i should have conducted myself better mm-hmm. uh, honestly pure and simple so this is my apology i am very 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 sorry to this individual you know we also talk about that we don't want fans to feel like they can't talk to us and that yeah. interaction or if they at, disagree with us about something yeah that we'll go oh well fuck you <laughs> you know yeah we don't want and, that. and that interaction realizing and taking a step back i was like wow that really contradicts the message we like to promote on here. Yeah. So I reached back out to the individual and, and I apologized to them personally and told them, you know, we did cross that line and we are sorry and we are going to make this apology. Mm-hmm. And they reached back out to us and everything's been hashed out. Everything's good now. And again, it was honestly something that we needed to experience because it was a learning moment and just for future notice. We definitely know how to conduct ourselves better in those situations and to not react the way that we did. Yeah. Um, so again, from the bottom of my heart, I am very, very sorry. And I do apologize if my actions and my words have hurt you in a negative light and have also hurt the credibility of this show. Mm-hmm. And I think every single one of you ghouls, gals, and creeps immunes for continuing to support us and continuing to listen to us and continuing to, you know, just stick around even for after moments like that yeah so thank you very much for doing that we you know wouldn't blame you at all if you didn't do it but the fact that you guys still stay around we appreciate so thank you and again to this individual for you know i just want to say one more time i am very sorry for what had happened and i and i thank you again for reaching out to us and letting us know that with that being said let's go ahead and jump into today's episode enjoy 
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Punk Rock Horror Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Cody. And today we're here to remind you that as it gets colder, that you take the time and appreciate the snow, because as soon as that heat comes back, I, I promise so well that taints wet. <laughs> what snow? The Fire Nation is coming to us in Colorado. Yeah, everything's, li- <laughs> everything's literally on fire. <laughs> Today, though, is a really exciting show. We are returning to talk about Satanism and Horror, the part two of this. Uh, maybe w- there will be a part three. I, d- I don't know. I feel like There's two so is much. good enough. But uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes today. But to join us in the conversation today is a very exciting special guest who is an all-around badass, in our opinion. He's, he's a musician. He has done documentaries. I mean, the guy literally lives by the motto of do what you want to do in life and be happy <laughs> as you do it. And he does it, and, and he's an inspiration for us. Everybody, we welcome the amazing Frank Meyer. Welcome, Frank. Why, thank you, guys, and and so happy to be here on part three of Satanism. I know I have a a part two. I have a a, a long history with Satan, as you're aware. You know, being uh, (laughs) being a musician, of course, I sold my soul to him years ago, which is why I'm here talking to you now. And just being an all-around fan and supporter of evil in its different incarnations, (laughs) uh, I just feel like it's serendipitous, really, that here we are. You, the two of you, me, and uh, the dark overlord himself. <laughs> uh, but anyways, thank you guys. Uh, appreciate it. Yeah, uh, well, welcome, Frank. So uh, before we jump into today's main content, we want to get to know you a little bit first. So uh, as we kind of just intro to you, I mean, you, you're a guy of, of many different flavors. I mean, uh, on one end, you're you're this fantastic musician who's played with a lot of legendary punk and just iconic acts in general. Um, I mean, from working with drummers from Social Distortion to even being part of doing stuff with Pearl Jam, you're all over the place with music. And then you're also recently did a documentary about about rap music too and one has to wonder where you find the time why don't you interest yourself just a little bit more sure well uh sleep is my enemy so that's the (laughs) overall approach is that if you just don't sleep a lot or you just sleep in small little little doses then you can get a lot done uh also i'm a morning person so i i tend to get up early and just kind of go right at it you know so i Mm. i don't know i i feel like i just you know work hard i guess but uh, my deal is I'm a musician. My main band I've played in the longest that I'm probably the most known for is the Streetwalking Cheetahs, sort of an L.A. punk rock and roll band, uh, made a zillion records and toured and then took a little time off and then came back and have been doing it ever since. Uh, I also sing for James Williamson from the Stooges. We had a band called James Williamson and the Pink Hearts, and uh, we just did a new record with Dennis Tech of Radio Birdman. They actually did a record together. I just co-wrote a few songs on it. I work with uh, that band Blind House. You mentioned the drummer of Social Distortion, Derek O'Brien, who is the original drummer on Mommy's Little Monster and all that stuff. He and I have a band with Brian Coakley from uh, the Cadillac Tramps, uh, called Blind House, based out of Long Beach. Uh, and then I also have a new band called Spaghetti and Frank, which is Eddie Spaghetti from the Super Suckers and me. And we just released a single a few months ago, and we've got a new single coming out. I'm actually going down tomorrow to go shoot a music video with Eddie uh, for our new single. And then I play with this heavy metal guy, Thor, uh, and by the way, this is just this is just like this one tiny little part of my whole larger scheme. <laughs> but Thor is this yeah. heavy metal guy. I play with him. And then lately I've been working with a lot of bands because during this COVID thing, you know, being able to record from home has turned into a nice little side gig for me, being able mm-hmm. to produce other bands, mix other people's records, collaborate with other people. So like, you know, for instance, with Eddie, the Super Suckers are a touring band and they all live all over the place. So now that you can't tour, they're all just kind of waiting for life to start again. So meanwhile, you know, he and I can record remotely essentially and keep making mm-hmm. music while both of our bands are kind of on hold. Um, so I've been doing a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, that's my music career. It's totally weird and all over the place. Um, I also have made, I directed two documentary films, also music related, but they're hip hop. The first one came out on Amazon Prime in March, and it's called Risen, the story of Shron Hellraiser Smith. And Shron Hellraiser Smith was Hellraiser from Wu-Tang Clan's yeah. Sons of Man. They were an offshoot group, you know, 90s rapper from the golden era. And he and I go way back in my early days. I was a publicist, and they were one of the groups that I first worked with. So he and I 
knew each other from back when we were both like young kids starting off in show business and <laughs> yeah. you know trying to figure out what the hell still got that sparkle in your eye. <laughs> and so all these years later he had a brain aneurysm and he lost his whole left side of his body and the ability to rap and uh i just started going out to the east coast as often as i could and filming his whole kind of recovery and recuperation process so that film came out in march and then uh, there's a new one that I've already filmed and edited and we're just starting to shop now called Freestyle 101 that is about the history of freestyle rap. Uh, so while I've been a rock and roll guy, I also have just always loved hip hop music. And um, I think, I guess I'm, I mean, I'm a storyteller. I've also written eight books. I didn't even really get into that with you guys. because sometimes <laughs> yeah. I, find, I throw so much shit out of people that they're just like, my God, it's hard to keep up with. It's hard for me to keep up with, but, I have also written eight published books, and uh, most of them are about music, and two of them are about fatherhood. And, um, you know, but I guess if there's anything that ties this weird music career and, you know, film and TV work and the books together, it's that I'm a storyteller. I generally like to just, you know, I have my two, two three minute long stories. Those are punk rock songs. I have my <laughs> five minute stories. Those are metal songs and hard rock songs. And then I have my 90 minute stories, which would be the feature length films. And then I have my 500 page stories, which would be a book. Yeah. But they're all just doing what I'm doing with you guys now. Just talking <laughs> and singing. That's fucking awesome, man. <laughs> so, and, and from, and you did a few, and you've also done a few interviews. Uh, one quote from uh, your interview for Hilo of with ibpost.com is you, you were quoted saying, you know, it's, it's literally you taking, making lemonade out of lemons moment. You, you, and you've approached the pandemic with that. You're just like, okay. Uh, and it's literally what you just said. You look at this as kind of like an advantage from what it seems like to accomplish and, and do these other projects that you've been wanting to do, to tell the stories that you've been wanting to tell. I, I think that for me and a lot of artists, the pandemic has, it's the silver lining of it is that uh, you've been sort of forced to be home and forced to get creative with other ways to make money and other ways to keep busy. And, you know, who wants to just sit around and, and, I mean, you know, the reality is for me personally, if I sit around and watch TV all day, you know, I usually on a normal day won't start drinking until maybe, you know, noon. I might have a beer with a taco. <laughs> I have nothing else going on and no responsibility. Noon really quickly becomes 11, it becomes 10. Yeah. All of a sudden, I'm just like, what am I doing? I've watched Peaky Blinders every episode three times now. <laughs> I'm starting to drink at 10.30 a.m. with breakfast. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just, I'm not, I got to have purpose in my life, and I got to have deadlines, and I've got, I like to, to be moving forward with stuff. So when, you know, in my situation, my last job, I was at Fender, and I was directing Fender the Guitar Company, and I was directing all of their their in-house uh, digital tutorial videos for the Fender Play app. So essentially super high-tech guitar lessons, basically. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we got furloughed. First we were asked to work from home, and then we got furloughed, and then we got laid off. And, um, you know, very quickly I started kind of going, okay, well, you know, as soon as I got told to work from home, I, I was like, awesome <laughs> I was like, this is great i can just make music all day because they're not going to give me that much work right now you know what i mean <laughs> how much can i really do from home uh for them you know i was like this is mm -hmm. great then of course when i lost my job i was like okay maybe this wasn't so great but uh, <laughs> but it, i i had at that point just sh fully shifted into i was editing my doc my second documentary film a friend of mine had directed a suicide girls documentary for showtime well i mean directed it for suicide girls and it was in the process of going over to showtime and stuff and so i had already agreed to score her film so i had another i had a kind of like two big projects in front of me that were going to take a few months so i was like okay you know, if I work on the music for this film and edit this other film, that's going to ride me through the pandemic. But mm -hmm. the pandemic has gone on much longer than that. So <laughs> at that point, yeah. I started kind of doing, well, what else can I do? So I recorded some solo material. I put out this song called Repetition Repeat that was also sort of a response to the pandemic. My band, The Streetwalk and Cheetahs, recorded remotely a song called War Zone that was basically about all the protests and all that stuff. And we made a video for that in, you know, kind of remotely, essentially. Then I started doing the stuff with Eddie Spaghetti. Eddie already had a track with Eddie Vedder 
and there was like some missing elements because it was a live recording and some of the mics were like faulty and blah 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 so i just sort of helped them clean that up and add some missing guitar and vocals and so they could put that out um lest we think that i'm out there recording with pearl jam myself i've never uh n never was in a room with those guys i just helped clean up their track um <laughs> but uh but eddie spaghetti and i've known each other for years and this was a good excuse like i said it's just trying to make lemons out of lemonade like i was like well what else can i do i mean what other musicians do i know are sidelined right now and they can't mm -hmm. tour and who can record at home and let's all start making music together you know yeah that's awesome man it, i want to ask you one about just like 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 your love for hip hop and rap because it gets, you can tell that you definitely have you do at least appreciate the genre and Absolutely. there's always that just, like I'm a huge super nerd like I'll go toe to toe with any whoever you say is the most knowledgeable hip hop friend of yours I will mop the floor with them <laughs> I'm, like, I know hip hop like I know horror movies like I know punk rock like I know you know I if mm -hmm. I know something I'm super 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 nerdy about it. <laughs> I, I think that's why we were really excited as well to bring you on the show because we have a very similar mentality over yeah. here of, of anything that we like we, we research yeah. the hell I out of it just because we love it oh yeah that's why I have like three different satanic books in my house somewhere sure. <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoy Satan you gotta collect his work you know? oh yeah dude the satanic bible has been a fucking great sure. read too it's, you got it's the so Necronomicon good. you got the Satan's bible you got all the Slayer records you're in <laughs> yeah. you need man so again, you're a man of many talents. Yeah, you, you take on a lot of projects, but from an outside perspective, it definitely kind of looks like a bit of a, an overwhelming thing to be doing, you know, a documentary to helping out clean up tracks for Pearl Jam to starting to make more music. Does it get a little overwhelming? And, and if so, how do you usually feel that and get past that? Uh, no, it doesn't because I just balance things well, I think, uh, and I'm good at structuring myself. So I usually am not, like, I'll rattle off, you know, oh, in the last couple of months, I did these seven things. But I didn't necessarily do all seven of them simultaneously. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I kind of figure out what the schedules of everything is, and I work it so that I'm working on, like, one or two things at once. And then uh, I put those down and move on to the next things. And the way that I've been working, working, you know, from home during the pandemic is I just... I literally, at the beginning of each week, I make a list of all the things that I want to accomplish that week, and I just stick to it and accomplish them. And I, me being my own boss is not an excuse to not do the work. So yeah. I just, like, I'll, this week, I'm like, okay, I got to add backing vocals to this Swedish band City Kids record. Like, they, they sent me their record and said, we want you to sing and play ideas. So that's on my priority list. I've got, I'm working with uh, the band Nashville Pussy. I'm doing some vocals on their record. So Tuesday, I'll do that. You know, Wednesday, tomorrow's the Eddie Spaghetti shoot. I'll do get that out of the way. You know, one <laughs> thing a day or two things a day. Then, like, you know, I've got notes coming in on the Suicide Girls documentary that I, I know that, I have an idea, probably about two days' work on that. So when those notes come in, I'll prioritize that and say, okay, Thursday, Friday, I just knock out that. Then I'll go back to the documentary. You know, and it, since they're all things that I'm interested in and that essentially I'm the brainchild or, or I've been approached, I mean, it's always something that I have my hooks in on some level and I'm personally interested in the music or the project or the film or the band. So as long as I don't try to do everything at once, because then you can get overwhelmed, but usually I'm just doing one or two things. I just move on to the next one or two things and schedule it out so I'm not too uh, crazy. And the other thing I do is I, I also take breaks. You know, I don't, mm -hmm. like I'll wake up in the morning and start a project and go till noon or one or two. And then I put it down, I walk out and I go have a taco and I have a beer or pizza or whatever, you know, like go pick up some food or go to a little patio thing and take a few hours off and I clear my brain and then I come back and I either pick that one up or I start the next thing. Uh, and then I go another, you know, four or five, six hours, whatever. And then I stop. It's not mm -hmm. that overwhelming. It's like having a day job, except that I can set my own hours and it's way cooler than having a day job because I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm doing all cool stuff. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm bopping between a bunch of things, but they're all really neat things, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so I, I want to bring it back to you uh, before we jump into the main subject for today. But before we do that, I want to know if you'd be willing to humor us in, uh, in playing a new horror game with us. I sure will humor you by playing a new horror game. All right. 
All right. So uh, <laughs> obviously we're talking about Satanism. So I've actually I've had to think of three different games that involve Satan. That's recently. right. By the way, there might be a I, third one. I happen to have a goat and a sword. You want me to bust those out? <laughs> if you want to get all evil speak, we could just. Whatever. All right. <laughs> I mean, Evil, I was still I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Evil Speak with Clint Howard, but it, there's a great scene involving a, a sword and a goat. <laughs> you, and, and I think you can fill in the blanks from there. I, 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 I think I've actually seen the scene that you're talking about. I'll tell you a we, funny, really quick story. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, you're I totally, totally fine. This, totally fine. I only have, I have an Evil Speak story, and there's no other place that I could tell this anecdote. <laughs> So my mom took my brother and I, my little brother and I, to see the movie Evil Speak because Clint Howard was in mm -hmm. the movie Rock and Roll High School. We were like, well, that's the guy from Rock and Roll High School. Burger <laughs> Mike. <laughs> so we, and, and from what we could tell, it was a movie about video games. We're like, mom, take us to a movie with the guy from Gentle Ben and Rock and Roll High School. It's, it's about video games. So we go, <laughs> and what it's, the movie's about is a kid who gets possessed by video games and then massacres his entire Catholic school. <laughs> And there's a scene about halfway through where he possesses some pigs and they go into the hot gym teacher's shower and eat her naked, you know, body a lot. Like they basically, <laughs> yeah. this nude woman is being eaten by pigs and blah, blah, blah. My mother turns to my little brother and I, and I must have been maybe eight, and he was like <laughs> five, like way too young for this movie. And she goes, you know what? This is disgusting. <laughs> I'm out of here. I'll be in the lobby. Come get me when the movie's done. And she just left us there to watch the rest of it and stormed off into the lobby to read a book. And we just, like, when she turned to us, we thought she was going to be like, come on, you're not going to see any more of this movie. She went, I'm out of here. I'll be reading my book. You tell me when it's done. <laughs> She's, she's, like, just, she's probably just like, I can finally finish chapter three. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big Stephen King fan, so she probably she probably walked out of there and was like, that is classless horror. Let me get back to it. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah, let's get back to yeah. the, you know, yeah, orgy. Let, let, let's read it and, and, you know, not talk about Anyways. the fact that there's weird orgy scenes in the book. Yeah, so sorry, I didn't mean to sidetrack the game. Let's no, go right go. That I, I realized that I had an anecdote about evil speak. <laughs> no, that, that's, that's, a, that's a hilarious story because it's just like, <laughs> it, just your mom's just like, come get me when you're done. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> like what? All right, I get to see more. It's like dead if you movie. caught your kid whacking off to a porn, you're like, when this is over, we're going to have a talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you're through. Yeah, you let through. me know when the, when the reverse cowgirl is done. <laughs> you're doing your own laundry, by the way. Yeah. I'll come back in three minutes, okay? <laughs> right. Anywho, game time. And I love it. I love it. Okay, so. Coming back, it's I gotta remember because I actually gotta remember what it was now that what the game was because that because your because your story <laughs> it, it, no it was it was a good story it was such a good story that like I just completely forgot about it because I just wanted to know like if your mom was got like mad in the theater and like drug you out, dragged you out and then you were just <laughs> like oh no she, she, she left me. us there I was like oh yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> um all right excuse me so. Coming back to it, um, so again, we're talking about Satanism, and this horror game, I figured fits in very well. So we talked about, recently, we had a game about what would you would get for Satan on his grocery list. We talked about, had a game of what would your own religion be in, in the vein of, you know, Anton LaVey. And so I figured the next best one we could do that involves Satan and Satanism is Satan's coming back up just from hell for one day and, he, and he's coming up to you and he's saying all right frank i'm gonna give you whatever you want but you gotta beat me in a competition well frank you're a musician so you know your strengths so you challenge him to a competition of music so here's the game what song and what instrument will you play on against satan in order to get what you want and beat him Ooh, that's tough it, feel free to have I mean, fun I with it well, I mean, there's only so many answers. I mean, I do, I play a bunch <laughs> of instruments, but I mean, to be perfectly frank, <laughs> um, uh, yokes, I don't know that I don't, there's only a couple of them that I feel like I, if I was going to compete against the Dark Lord, I don't, you know, like, I don't know that keyboards are bass while I'm fine on them. I don't know that I would necessarily be at that level. So for <laughs> me, if we're talking about a musical competition against, against the Overlord, it's gotta be vocals or guitar. Um, because those are probably the two things I'm the strongest at in my musical arsenal. But boy, 
against Satan. I'm really, I'm, 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 my, I'm flashing to the Tenacious D movie. <laughs> and I'm just wild guessing that Satan's probably a shredding guitar player. So I think I might have to just go vocal with him because here's the thing I know about Satan. And I'm familiar with his work. His <laughs> vocal approach is very guttural. You know, he, mm -hmm. you're not going to get a lot of um, tenor and a lot of falsetto from from uh, the great Dark Overlord himself. You're going to get a lot of Cookie Monster stuff, which is very appropriate for the kind of music he plays. As you mm -hmm. know, Satan was the singer in Fear Factory for a while and the original singer yes. of Exodus. Yeah. But um, <laughs> so I feel like if we're going metal, he's, he, you know, he's, I'm going to go toe to toe with them. But it's a music competition isn't it boys it's not a yep. it's not a metal competition so while he can get out gutter on me i feel like i could bust out like masters of war by dylan or incense and peppermints or some really hippie like flowery <laughs> shit. he just wouldn't even know what to do with it i could sing about a song about peace and i'm pretty sure he'll just melt you know what i mean because that's mm -hmm. like that's like poison yeah. to say it's like I mean, water I get to it a now. witch <laughs> so I, I feel like I would just sing because I just feel like there's some areas that I could go in that Satan, as strong and diverse as he is, uh, just couldn't go there. What song? Uh, what song would you play? Would you challenge him to? Um, I think I would do "Tiptoe Through the Tulips" by Tiny Tim. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, for a lot of the tulips. And one of them, and I'm about to really blow your minds, is that I played guitar in Tiny Tim's band for a. A Shut kids. the uh, fuck uh, up. Two weirdest things on my resume are that I play guitar with Tiny Tim and I play guitar in the Schoolhouse Rock touring band. Oh my God. <laughs> so I actually was Lolly Jr. in the chorus, Lolly, 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 get your ass. <laughs> oh when, when, when Rhino Records put out the, the, um, all the Schoolhouse Rock stuff, uh, like a DVD retrospective, and they put yeah. it out on TV like in the early 2000s or whatever, um, they reunited all of the original musicians and did a tour, and I finagled my way into like guitar player, singer, band leader, and was in the schoolhouse rock band. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> and Tiny Tim, I I met because my brother uh, got at the time he was in the movie Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy's Dead, and he got asked to be on a telethon for a burn victim unit in a children's <laughs> hospital. Um, the irony, because it's Freddy Krueger, too. <laughs> thank you. And he got asked to be a celebrity, you know, like to go on this telethon and answer phones and, you know, do little little skits and stuff. And he told me about it. I'm like, oh, you have to go. That sounds incredible. He's like, I'm absolutely not going. And I'm like, you know, you, you get, it's a telethon, dude. You ha Who's in it? He's like, I don't know, Alan Thicke, Tiny Tim. I'm like, oh, my God, you have to go. <laughs> Alan Thicke and Tiny Tim. He's like, in Miss World or Miss Teen USA or something. I'm like, yes, 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 you're going. He goes, I I'll go. only go if you <laughs> go with me. Like, you have to go with me. And I'm like, okay, I'll go with you. And somewhere along the way, he told them, like, yeah, my hotshot guitar playing brother from Hollywood's going to join me. And they eventually, or they apparently told the house band, oh, some hotshot from L.A. is coming in town. You can tell your guitar player to take the, the night off. And when I night, I mean, it was a 48-hour straight telethon. Where <laughs> I was now told, as I got off the plane and walked in, and they were like, hey, come on, little kid. And Frank, you're going to join the band over there. You guys can start rehearsing. I'm like, rehearsing? For what? And they're like, well, you're the guitar player in the band. I'm like, I am? They're like, yeah. And I'm like, well, okay, sure. That Okay, that's awesome. Uh, who am I playing with? So like, everybody. I'm like, every, what does that mean? They go, well, you're playing with every single musical act over the next 48 hours straight. Oh, like, my God. 70, 80 songs. I had no music. I don't read music. I just was like, what? And among the people we backed up was Tiny Tim, and I backed him up like 12 different times over that 48 hours. <laughs> it was insane. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. You know, uh, uh, it, so it's... So you did back up Sorry, for but... Tulips? Uh, yes, we did that, and... Yes. <laughs> the... <laughs> the, the, so here's my quick Tiny Tim imitation, because this is exactly how he would start every song. He had his little ukulele, and it was never even remotely in tune. And he would turn and go, <laughs> That doesn't Mr. surprise Frank, me. 
You go, Mr. Frank, we're gonna do a bouncy, take me out to the ball game in the key of A and a one and a two and a take me out to the ball. <laughs> <laughs> and we would just all look at each other like, uh, bum, 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 just kind of fall in place. You know what I mean? It was insane. <laughs> like shoulder shrug, like, yeah, yeah right. I, I guess take me out of the ball game and hey, come on, boy. <laughs> and, and, we did and I remember, uh, Mr. Frank, can I get a bright and peppy tire yellow ribbon around that old oak uh, to re a one and a two? <laughs> Like what? <laughs> what year is it? I'll tie a yellow ribbon. <laughs> oh my god, he sounds just as awesome as I hoped. <laughs> you know, uh, and by the way, one other little detail: he was wearing a suit made entirely of Mickey Mouse doll heads. <laughs> so his suit was all Mickey Mouse heads. Okay, um, I want this suit. Like, so not like was, not like printed, like the actual like. Doll head. Sort of both. It was like printed, but they were kind of puffy. Like they were like, like <laughs> they, I don't even. I mean, I don't know the technology behind his outfit. It, okay. But, but it was. It, I remember it being a little weirder than just like Mickey Mouse yeah. suit. It like had like texture to it that was disturbing, and uh, and he wore that for the entire forty eight hours. Meaning like. You know, at some point I was like, hey, maybe I should go up to my hotel room and change, you know, because I've been in this shirt playing yeah. music for eight hours now. <laughs> uh, and like every time I'd come back down from changing, Tiny was just still in the suit. I was like, hey, well, whatever. You know, like, this is my only suit. If you've got a Mickey Mouse <laughs> suit, I guess you wear the Mickey Mouse suit. Right? He put yeah. a lot of work into it. He's just not going to take it off that easy. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I was pretty confident he did not bring any change of clothes. <laughs> you know, uh, we, we do try to be humble on the show, but we do sometimes feel cool when we're like, yeah, we get to talk to horror directors. And then uh, <laughs> you're on here and you're like, yeah, I got to play and back up Tiny Tim. We're like, well, no, we just got checked. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. What do weird, I have done in my it's life? Weird, <laughs> it's, a weird, it's a weird life I've led. An <laughs> <laughs> so uh, exciting one, too. I mean, you, you come in and you're just like, oh, you're, you're playing now. Uh, go, mm -hmm. go join the band. And uh, here's Tiny Tim. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, the biggest, the thing that I remember being the most petrified in that particular situation was the fact that everyone had charts for all of the songs except me. So I would just have to turn to the keyboard player, the bass player, and go, oh, what the fuck am I supposed to do? And they'd be like, it's just A, G, D, and then the chorus is D, C, B. And I'd go, all right, okay, I can do that. Um, and I kind of just keep my volume down for the first few till I kind of, you know, fed up. <laughs> okay, I got it. Then I kind of jump in the mix. And then the funny thing too, is at some point halfway through, they were like, hey, we've got some time to fill. If you want to teach the band one of your songs or something, you could like, you know, be the musical guest for, you know, 4.5 minutes. And I was like, oh, uh, okay. And I'm kind of going like, cause this was like a sort of a, like a lounge band, house yeah. band. like. Yeah. None of my material from at that time I was playing in the street walking cheetahs and there's not any single song that would have been appropriate for this. Uh, so and I also had to pick something pretty easy because I had to teach it to him two seconds before the red light rolled. So I I showed him a Johnny Thunders song, Johnny Thunders and the Heartbreakers. He was in the New York Dolls, and it's a song um, called "Blame It on Mom." Basically, it's about heroin. And yeah. uh, <laughs> I uh, so I ran I ran <laughs> yeah, the band like, through a Johnny Thunders song about heroin during the telethon for the burn victim unit <laughs> at the Children's Hospital. <laughs> With Tiny Tim in the corner going, With Tiny show. Tim in the corner Good going, show. that your Mr. brother Psych was also helped set up being in a movie about a Bruin victim too. So that's kill true. children. The irony, yeah. So Brecken <laughs> at that time was was in Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy's Dead. I'm trying to think about what, what time in that career he would have been in. It was probably right before Clueless, actually. I want to say that was before Clueless. I, um, yeah, I, I think because uh, Clueless was definitely a little more, um, for the time, a little more modern when he came out. Right, so it would have had to been right. after it, I feel like, too. Yeah. Cody's yeah. checking right now just to be sure. <laughs> yeah, he, he did a lot of stuff. Uh, the funny thing is I remember because Roseanne Barr and Tom Arnold do a cameo in Freddy's Dead. And the reason that that even happened was that they like kind of fell in love with my brother. They'd worked with them on a show and they really liked him. And, the, and so he was asked by Roseanne and Tom to be on not one, but two 
Tom Arnold pilots, both of which failed. I don't think one of them never even aired and one of them might have aired and then the show got canceled or whatever. But so for whatever weird reason, he was kind of palling around with Tom and Roseanne at that time, or at least, I mean, he was a lot younger than them, but they were sort of took an interest in him. And so when he got the Freddy movie, if memory serves, they were kind of like, oh, that'd be fun. And they just stopped by the set and somehow ended up in the movie. Like they just sort of <laughs> did a cameo, you know what I mean? Like it was all kind of just happened, but... <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's nuts. Uh, I mean, in the best way possible, like nuts, because it's just like uh, that's, that's that's stuff that you would uh, kind of like imagine happening in a sense, and 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 then uh, actually being part of it and seeing that happen, and then then just even be connected, even by a, fami- a, a familial bond. He uh, was uh, he was on a Rodney Dangerfield. Him and Soleil Moon Fry were on a unaired Rodney Dangerfield pilot. You can find it on YouTube. And Brecken plays his grandkid, I think, or his ne- nephew or something. Okay. And um, I went, and the funny thing is, I, so I went to the taping of that, and I met Rodney. And I have the same Rodney Dangerfield story that anyone that has ever been on a set with Rodney Dangerfield has. <laughs> we all have the same story, which is, I saw his balls. Because <laughs> Rodney would just walk, he's like your dad. Like he just walks around in a robe that's never quite closed. <laughs> and you know, so like I and I had heard that about him. I think I had heard like how on Howard Stern or someone tell a story about like seeing Rodney's balls because he wore a robe. And I went and sure enough, he was wearing a robe, and sure enough, it blew open and I saw his ball. <laughs> um You're well, like, this is the life now <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, i i think with that being said we it, it, we should probably actually jump into today's topic before sure, sure. before we start yeah. talking about more because otherwise like that question it, it, it game can up, did, right okay yeah you told yeah. that that's it, it Tiny was, Tim. it was a great transition <laughs> right, okay gotcha yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's so uh bravo good choice thank you sir thank you <laughs> Um, but let's go ahead and jump into it. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Cody at this point uh, uh, to yeah. uh, intro today's subject. So last time we talked about the creation of Satanism through Anton LaVey's life and just kind of like how he created modern Satanism. And so for part two, we're going to talk about several different branches of Satanism along. I thought this was kind of a cool little thing, but along with the creation of Satan himself in Christian art and just Christianity itself. I I actually watched a documentary on um, Amazon Prime called How the Devil Got His Horns. And this guy does a really cool job on describing how Satan kind of just like first started out in Christianity because Satan doesn't originate, originate in Christianity. He doesn't originate in the Bible. (laughs) <laughs> he was also stolen from paganism but before that what's considered the very first depiction of satan and lucifer and all that in any type of art is uh, a picture of three angels in a church in ravenna northern italy and um there's this church like all the murals and the paintings and stuff in the church up in this corner it's kind of like hidden almost uh, there's three angels. There's an angel in red, and then there's an angel in the middle that's purple, and then to the angel's left. So when we're looking at the picture to his right is a blue angel. And so the red angel has three horses in front of it, and then the blue angel has three goats in front of it. And so there's a lot of controversy over this picture because the one in the middle is obviously Jesus. And then the one to his left, the blue angel, is what's consider is what a lot of people try to consider the first depiction of the devil, Lynn Lucifer. Um, and it's because during that time, it was I think the sixth century. Oh, sorry, I had to fit, find it in my notes. You're totally, um, you're totally in that fine. time, there was no Satan or hell or anything. A lot of people argue that the blue one is actually just the angel of darkness, you know, the angel of night, and because blue is at that time was considered the more like evil of the colors because it's like melancholy, dark, drab. And so that's kind of like where people believe is the first origination of Satan. 
And then the next depiction of them is in for another five centuries. There's no more art of them. And uh, it's a piece of art in a church in Torcello, Venice, Italy. Painting has Jesus in a mandolin type thing. And then part of that painting, it has like a river of fire that goes to another part of it. And you see angels actually throwing people into fire. There's no demons. Like demons weren't even a thing in Christianity at this time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so, and then you see a blue ogre with crazy white hair and crazy eyes and like a snakish beard with a little man sitting in his lap and they're sitting on a throne with a serpent eating sinners. And so there, there's an argument between whether the blue ogre is Satan or the little man is Satan. Because another like nickname for Satan, I guess, is the little man of mischief or something like that. But so there's also the argument between those two. <laughs> and then Satan actually didn't even get his like evil anthropomorphic look for ever honestly christianity was at war with paganism Mm -hmm. and especially during the crusades and the medieval times and that's when they really started like forcing satan into their religion by saying like you know he's evil and everything and they started adopt pretty much saying that the entire religion of paganism is hell and all their gods are demons and deities of evil and everything. Um, I mean, <laughs> the pagan god Bess, who in that religion was actually, like, he looked evil and everything, but he was actually the protector of evil. Like, he he protected against evil. He was supposed to be the one that drove all of it away. And then Christianity... So he, he was basically, like, the pagan Batman. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and then... <laughs> yeah. And then fucking... <laughs> Christianity rolled in, especially during the medieval times and everything, the Crusades, the Spanish Inquisition, the Black Plague, all of that started going on. But then they took the god Bess and were like, that is Satan. That's what he looks like. <laughs> they're like, this giant goat man is what it is. So they took okay, that. So, so Bess is the first representation of what we think of as sort of a, a satanic figure like yeah it's an it's an like a mixture of Bess, uh a certain egyptian god i think it's actually it might be set so that's why the temple is set like satanic group uh, broke off um we'll get to that in a minute yeah it's it's, (laughs) it's pretty set in history yeah um set and then there is one other one i can't remember the name i uh it's pretty set in history i I caught that thank you thank you it was like okay he's got yokes no that uh that that i can i I know a pun when i hear it (laughs) (laughs) do you know what a pigeon says when he's flying over a, a revolution what coo (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> thank you i'm gonna have to remember that one <laughs> i stole that from bill hicks it's a good bill hicks pun <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one <laughs> i like it uh, <laughs> All right. Anyways, Satan. No. Yeah. No, that's Anyways, Satan. back to Satan. So oh, back to Satan. Back to Satan. And so back to Satan. And so, <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't until the like I said, the medieval era, until Satan really started becoming like the source of evil. So art really kind of stopped around that time. And then also like Satan was in all the art and stuff like that because of the Black Plague and stuff like that. But any pictures of art and stuff like where Satan was in it, he was super two dimensional on all of them. So like it, everyone else started getting their own story, you know, like the story of Jesus started rounding out more as it kept getting told and told and told his apostles, whatnot, his old story. So like all like art, actual like art of it, they always had a story to tell, but Satan was always just the shadow because if you, you remember, he's only mentioned in the Bible once. Mm-hmm. And it's like, just by passing, like he's not in there. He's, it's, it's not there. And so, you know, then no one had any inspiration for him outside of like, besides the horrors of life. And so mystery plays kind of started coming about and they were huge in France. And during the 14th and 15th century, they started taking all the like stories from re- uh, religious stories and texts and started adding more imagination to them. They started creating their own versions of hell like based on their life and stuff and started like 
using voice and like talking and describing like what hell is and then what Satan could be and who the devil is and everything. That's kind of what started rounding out Satan to be this torturous tyrant of hell and everything. Cause originally he was kind of seen as just a bureaucrat. Like this is just my life. <laughs> this is my life now fucking get in there right, yes right. you like you had sex before yeah. you were married go into the fire <laughs> checking, people in, <laughs> checking people in at the gates yes uh, adulterer murder all right come on in yeah welcome okay. your your gift your gift bag is in the front like right. don't slaughter forget to children them. burn down a church oh come on in yeah we got a special <laughs> place in the VIP section all right Lawyer. Look, we, uh, we've never had a... Do we got room for lawyers down here? What's a lawyer? <laughs> You'll find out, son. You, that same thing, don't worry. A couple of years from now, we'll be filled with lawyers. <laughs> Just you wait. There's a lot Just of Just you cases. wait. I don't it's think just... in terms of one linear timeline, I'm everywhere at once. You're just not prepared for it yet. Lawyers are coming soon. <laughs> yeah, amazing. <laughs> TBA. Two T- T- TBA. Um... <laughs> And so uh, one of the more, like, one of the most solid-looking depictions of Satan, I guess, um, looking of him is a painting in the Baptistry in Florence, Italy. It was created around 1260 by Capo di Marco Valdo. He also painted Satan as this big blue ogre with, like, thick a thick beard, horns, come, his horns and everything. He's eating the souls of people. And it, that's like showing his my tyranny God. and everything. That's, yeah, that's my Satan. Yeah. <laughs> that's the Satan I grew up with, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hashtag my Satan. <laughs> but like, the, and still boy. hashtag that's my Satan. Hashtag that's, that's my Satan. Satan. <laughs> That's the guy that I, I'm an old fashioned guy. You know, <laughs> yeah. I need goats. I need children being eaten. If you can swallow some souls, like then you're in my game. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> that's how you do it. That's that's, that's how my dark roll. lord. Okay, yeah. don't that's fuck with that. Lord. If you um, could stop to pick him as a romantic influence in a TV show, that'd be great. And a Absolutely. detective. <laughs> Worthy mustache private investigator. I, I'm feeling you on that one. <laughs> Hello, my name is Rick Santano. <laughs> Detective. Detective Rick Santano. <laughs> Hurry, hop in the blue best. And at the end of the like, you know he was Satan, right? How'd you know? Santano. Like, yeah, come exactly. on. Exactly. <laughs> right. A giant he, thick beard. His yes. whole skin is red. His law firm is called Evil Incorporated. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what were you not getting about this? He pays us in souls. Right. <laughs> His entire well, office is lined with upside down crosses. Yeah, How many and, more? But to be fair, you're also describing the White House right now. So yeah, seriously, <laughs> for fuck's <laughs> sake. <sakes. Wow. laughs> oh, big, big, ooh, big, uh, big, big, big. Right here, <laughs> left and right on the Punk Rock Horror Podcast. Yep. Yeah, just killing it out one at a time. Even our guests are. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sorry, guys. Didn't mean to drop a knowledge bomb on you. <laughs> 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 no, nah, I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> it's okay. Half yeah, the time, okay. neither do we. Yeah. <laughs> Who's Satan? I don't even read the paper. Apparently, there's some virus going on. What? Yeah, what's a virus? I was just like, I don't know. <laughs> I heard it's named after a beer. <laughs> yeah. I just kept reading for months, like, don't drink Corona. I'm like, well, whatever. I don't even drink that shit. Yeah. <laughs> the lime doesn't help. PBR. Yeah, now look, if you were talking about a, a, a Jameson virus, well, now I'm concerned. I'm almost like, I need my whiskey. Sounds like most <laughs> mayhem festivals back in the day. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> now, again, I've sidetracked you. Let's go back. Go back. Uh, back to Sam. Uh, back to Sam. So the, pretty much what's like kind of like solidified the more modern creation of Satan, we have to give, it's not even with painting or anything. You have to give it to Dante's Inferno. Sure. Yeah, that's um, that's basically like his book and everything is kind of like what solidified the mo- the modern Christian view of what hell and Satan is. Because when they finally illustrated the book, the book like they drew Satan out how he described him, and he mm-hmm. was the ho- this horned beast with wings, and he's big and butt muscular, and like he you're gonna be fucked with for the rest yeah. of your life. That's the classic, <laughs> like, the classic Satan. 
Yeah. And so, yeah, that's kind of like where he kind of branched off and everything. Um, and also like, uh, I kind of, I kind of skipped it on accident, but like, uh, I brought up the paganism and everything. And so like the biggest influence from paganism for Satan is the God, the pagan God Pan, um, because he's, he's, the goat man <laughs> he has the goat hooves and everything but he's half a uh, man on the top still has his horns and the goatee and everything and once again he was a god of good and christianity was like nah satan so, <laughs> sorry every time the more and more i keep researching about all these religions it just makes me hate modern religion so much sorry well no it's cool man but if you think about it though like and you think about uh that it is a satyr basically being yeah. depicted as satan and, and you satyrs look, are the nicest things in all of folklore like more often than you know, not, more yeah, often than they, not. They, they are they are they are pretty nice but it's pan pretty, pan and pan's labyrinth was trying to help her find the way well if you think about it though <laughs> if you look at you know that depiction of satan but then you also look at cramp this, yeah, you know, <laughs> there is my favorite. Yeah, there's Prophecy. very, very, very apparent similarities between the two. And so coming back mm -hmm. to where it's just like uh, back then, they're just like, nope, does it have hooves? It's it's evil. Yeah, and then <laughs> it, it, not as related, but uh, it, it makes you also at least me. I should I shouldn't say you. I should say it makes me appreciate. Um, Elder God mythos, like H.P. Lovecraft, a little bit more, just because of the fact that it Speaking was of. genuinely a little bit more creative, <laughs> I guess you could say. <laughs> you know, but Frank, I, what, do you, what do you think about all this? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, just we'll go just to recent depictions of Satan. One movie that I really liked <clears throat> recently was The Witch. And I like how in that, they just had a goat. It wasn't like, meaning the goat did get, you saw the movie The Witch, right? Yeah. Yeah. The goat, uh, what was it, Black Peter? Was it was yeah, Black, Black uh, Peter? Yeah. Black, yeah. Um, which I know that Black Peter is, you know, there's a mythology behind that and all that mm -hmm. stuff. But like in any other horror movie, I feel like they would have like made the goat more like evilly and given him teeth. I mean, like oh, done something yeah. to make, like, make but like, that movie, to hell. Like the goat in that to movie, to he's. He's just a goat, and like when he finally gets possessed, he just rams the guy to death. You know what I mean? Like, because what else would a goat do? But he's pure evil at that point. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I just like like in all these depictions where these days it's always like you know a big cloven thing. In that movie, it was literally an evil old lady and an actual goat, <laughs> and they just rained terror upon everybody. It, it, it would have really ruined the tone if the goat like pulled out a chainsaw or a Glock but in, out of I nowhere. I feel like in any other movie, <laughs> they would have like made you know they would have had his eyes light up red, or they would. Oh, they would. Yeah. You know, they totally would have done the whole uh, the goat from Dragon would have to Hell. Yeah, or he would have yeah, stood you know, up or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I, don't get me wrong, I'm a Raimi guy, so I don't. I like what I like where oh, Raimi. Yeah. But um, yeah, I just liked the, in that movie uh, that they just kept it like, what if Little House on the Prairie was menaced by an actual witch and satanic goat? <laughs> <laughs> what if it was Little House on the Prairie, but goat but, murder? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I do like. I mean, I do like the classic. Um, Satan, you know, in the sense that, mm -hmm. like you were saying, sort of where we arrived at with our depiction of Satan is sort of a like bit Tim of Curry's. Uh, it's been an evolution, you know. Yeah, like Tim Curry, Satan in um, oh my legend, God. legend, oh, yeah, legend, yeah. That's a great version. Mm -hmm. that, and, that's like one of the coolest Satan's ever. Oh God, yeah. well, and it's and it's Tim Curry. Like, yeah. it, <laughs> it, 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 I mean, and I feel like that Satan almost was like the precursor to Hellboy. You know what I mean? Like I that feel like too. Like he, had the kind of, he had the giant mm -hmm. horns, and you know he was sort of like Hellboyish, uh, pre Hellboy. Mm -hmm. See, my favorite inter my favorite interpretation of Satan is always going to be con from Constantine. Yeah. Um, I always forget that actor's name, but the uh, the German actor. But like, just the fact that I, you know, he literally took the old timey interpretation of Satan, just being like a bureaucrat, like this is just what I do, man, like type yeah. thing, but still made him, you know, slimy and kind of gross looking just from his acting. But like, it just um, Peter Stormare. Yeah, pretty Peter Stormare's version of it, just because like. I don't know. He was such the perfect, like, visual interpretation to me where, like, he, he's human, but you can see something's off with him, and just his acting in it is just so fucking great. Yeah, I mean, I told you guys that I, by coincidence, 
uh, over the weekend no watched Devil's Reign, which is like this 70s William Shatner satanic yeah. Yeah. cult movie. And, and uh, you know, at the end, Ernest Borgnine, who's like the least threatening actor in the world, <clears throat> ends up becoming a full-blown horned goat you know, priest mm -hmm. at the end, and it's it, it was it's not a great movie, but it, it's a pretty wild satanic cult movie. Like I definitely was entertained throughout the whole thing. So I'm I'm gonna put Ernest Borgnine's Goat Head Man right in there as one of my top depictions. My favorite non horror depiction of Satan would definitely have to be Dave Grohl as Satan in the music <laughs> yeah, video <laughs> for mean, tribute. I'm with you on that one. Just because he does such a good job with mm -hmm. it. But if I was going to actually pick um, within horror, uh, my favorite depiction of Satan, just one that I thought was just really, really well done because it wasn't apparent, but the dread was there is, is actually uh, what Frank's pink was, which is the witch, believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> because I thought, just because I've seen so much horror and I've seen it, whether it is, you know, uh, Count of Reeves dealing with Satan and all that, or any other type of horror movie that had Satan in it, it always made it like this apparent, like over the top, let's or get the horns as big here. as we can. Yeah. And the witch was like, nah, Satan was always meant to be that dreadful shadow. So let's make him that dreadful shadow. And they barely show him, like, because they do kind of show him walking around in the witch but they don't it, it's yeah. not exposed and so that alone like was really chilling because it was just uh it's the whole idea of the less you see the more your imagination takes over mm -hmm. type of effect uh frank what about you and then cody how about you finish on yours sounds good um well i th i yeah i mean the witch uh for sure because i just love that they boiled it all down to the old lady and the goat uh, and I definitely like your Tenacious D one. Um, boy, I'm trying to think of another good Satan that we haven't mentioned. And I really like Tim Curry uh, as well in Legend. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I think I'm... Uh, we can always come back. We can give it to I, I'm, an, I'm, I'm sticking with The Witch. I, I really, I, I'm with you on that one. I think that's my favorite, uh, re at least recent, yeah. um, horror depiction of, uh, of Satan. And my non-favorite would be the entire work of Slayer. <laughs> I mean, not, I mean, my non-horror. Yeah, 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 no. yeah. We like not a favorite. Now, fuck Slayer. <laughs> kidding, kidding. I don't. We don't need a bunch of Slayer fans knocking down the door. No. <laughs> I horror at the moment. It's still going to be Peter Storm. Stormare. Stormare's version and Constantine for the horrors. It's about, even, it's, we talked about it here on the podcast on our comic book episode. We talked about Constantine. <laughs> but uh, that one, and then my non-horror. Uh, While you're thinking, I'll tell you one more. Yeah. This is super obscure, but this one. Oh, I just remembered. Ahead. There's a movie called The Evil from like 1981 or 80. It's uh -huh. sort of a knockoff of Amityville Horror. It stars Richard Crenna. And it, it basically, they're in this haunted house, and you know, evil spirits are beating them up, and you know, throwing people out windows and making them do all sorts of things. And they finally go down into the basement, where basically they realize they're going through a passageway to hell. And hell is just a big white room with a big white chair and a old guy in a suit that kind of looks like Boss Hog from the <laughs> Bazard. And he's kind of just sitting there with like a cane in the book and he's like, well, the, the colonel suit. my lair. And he just sort of like dazzles them with some fancy talk and they're like, fuck you, Satan. And they throw like a torch at him and blow it up. But literally <laughs> like in that movie, Satan's just like a swarthy Southern gentleman in a white suit. Yeah, yeah, I love those depictions where Satan's like, like that. that. He's just yeah, the, like, like a southern yeah. salesman. Like a Didn't he? Oh, um, um, but the other one sorry, that I actually sorry. liked because you, you just reminded me of it. just like the whole that, that. Oh my god, I just forgot. Now I got this image, <laughs> the same horror, dude. I'm so mad. No, it was it, no, oh Al Pacino. Sorry, are, Al Pacino and yeah. um, The Devil's Advocate. That's a good one because like. He's a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's he runs a law firm, and he's yeah. like, I'm Satan, man. He's like, yeah, I can see it. Uh, but the non-horror, uh, I just remember, it's my favorite depiction in all of literature is actually the sand, uh, the graphic novel, The, the Sandman. Sandman. Yeah, His yeah. depiction of Lucifer. Love because it. my favorite thing in that entire fucking series is just Lucifer going up to Morpheus, the Sandman, and going, yeah, I quit. 
<laughs> he's just like, wait, what? You can't quit running hell. He's like, fucking, who's going to stop me? Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I quit. I'm just going to go out to Earth. The, all, the, the gates to hell are locked. You figure it out. I retire. <laughs> and it just ends with say, Lucifer just like chilling out on a beach with a coconut drink. And he's just like, this is a good life now. See now, and now, now I got that image in my head, and now I have an image of of Satan wearing the Colonel outfit that Boss Hog yeah. had, and I now, think- uh, and and uh, that image in my head was somebody saying, you know, fuck you, Satan, and and your secret loving spices. Well, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, see, the thing that I like about uh, the reason why I like the Sandman one because I like the fact that it's depicted. He's depicted as an angel like yeah. a fallen angel he's not this right. monster he doesn't have the pitchfork and everything because he's depicted as like and he speaks, the original and he speaks, huh he speaks very poetic in that remember yeah. he's very like, eloquent like and soliloquies and because and... mm-hmm. like he's depicted basically like the original fucking depiction of satan as an angel and so like, i was like i thought that was fucking great i'm gonna throw one additional one out um i don't know if you've seen it frank uh but uh, there's a show on adult swim called your pretty face is going to hell yeah and uh, Matt Servito's uh, uh, Mr. Pickles. Uh, yeah, his 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 take <laughs> as Satan, the the CEO of Hell, was I really enjoyed it. Actually, I loved how he did it, and it made me laugh. Every I also time. love that they named the show after a Stooges song. That's a, that's <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> and so uh, that one also, I just want to give a shout out, just because he does like a really good job as 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 Satan. <laughs> right on. Um, but yeah, uh, it, uh, I mean, this has been a wild, wild episode, Frank. Yeah, it's been a fucking <laughs> awesome episode. It, yeah, it's uh, talking it, about Satan, Slayer, Frank's life, about, <laughs> all the cool stuff. Talking about yeah. Tiny Tim, yeah, Tiny Tim. Tim. <laughs> um, Frank, Best where, Tiny where Tim can, story ever? Where can everybody go to support you and what you're doing? Yeah, um, I'm on social media. You can go to Instagram. I'm the Frank Meyer. Uh, I'm on. Facebook is Frank M. Meyer. That's my middle initial. Uh, and then, I'll, you know, my bands, the Streetwalking Cheetahs uh, and Blind House, we're all online and social media and all that stuff. And if you want, uh, if you can go to Spotify and you can look up any of my bands. But I got this new solo single called Repetition Repeat. And uh, it's on Spotify and on YouTube. There's a great video directed by Aubrey Main that's really fun and really funny. Um, so yeah, just, just go find me on YouTube or, uh, Instagram or, you know, Sweet. on the streets <laughs> <laughs> um, at some point. At the taco stand. <laughs> I'll be at the taco stand in about 15 minutes. You can make me down there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ghouls, gals, crazy means, you know how to support us. Like the show on Facebook, search up on your horror podcast, Twitter at official PRHP. Give or, it those five stars. Yeah. Give us the five stars, not the four. We definitely earned the five. Yeah. We th- think so. Um, <laughs> and find us on Instagram, punk rock horror podcast, hashtag PRHP podcast. If you like what we're doing and want to get access to it before anyone else, you can do that via our Patreon, patreon.com slash punk rock horror podcast. Make sure you check out Frank and everything that he's doing. A man of many tastes, many flavors um frank is there any parting words you want to give to the show or to the listeners before you head out uh i guess i would just say that we're in weird times right now and a lot of people are having to sort of redefine what it is they do or they're having to look for work or they're having to make adjustments in their career because things that uh things change in ways they didn't expect uh and i know a lot of my friends and fellow artists have been having some stressful time and i've just i guess my advice to everyone right now is keep yourself busy and if you uh have free time on your hands find stuff that you enjoy doing or take up new hobbies or go learn stuff or do whatever but i think that the most dangerous thing right now is for everyone to just sit around doing nothing and eating too much and drinking too much and watching too much tv and it just gets you into a funk and it gets you into kind of being <clears throat> non-structured. And I think that's not always a good thing for people. I think people need to kind of have stuff to do and somewhere to be moving forward in their life, you know? Um, so I just, uh, much like I've been doing, and I think you guys as well, is just um, stay busy during this time, you know? Either work or if you don't have work, then hobby it up, baby. <laughs> hobby it up create your structure ghouls gals yeah i mean just give yourself stuff to do because honestly if you want to you can use this time to to really get a lot done i mean i've I, you know it's it's the silver lining thing but like i've got i've made more music and done more collaborations and and more cool shit over this last six months um simply because i've had the time and why not
Perfect. Awesome. Love it. Couldn't have said it any better ourselves. Ghouls, Gals, Creeps, Mutants. Again, check out Frank. Check out everything he's doing. Support him. Give him some love. Give the show some love as well. And again, thank you, Frank, for coming on and hanging out with us so late. It's been a blast. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Nice. And we will talk about horror with all y'all next time. Bye, bye.
It's...